I'll call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Cooney? Dr. Corlino? Here. Mr. Brown? Grayson? Dr. King? Here. Mr. Mascara? Here. Mr. Morella? Here. Mr. Snowy? Here. Mr. Palma? Here. Ms. Virgil? Here. Mr. Chang? Here. And Zion Kai? Here. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance.
specific increase in the scale score points in the access test, which is taken by our um, English language learners. Um, the target goal in that objective, uh, measurable objective, where we did not meet the uh, goal was 79%. We scored at 71%. The difference in making that goal or not making that goal was two students. If two additional students had passed, we would have been right around the 79% mark because we don't have a lot of students in that category. So. Um, because of that, uh, Andrew Salvaggi, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, um, and Lisa Howard, our Supervisor for World Language and ESL, will be creating an improvement plan. And I know Lisa is already uh, big on working on that um, and working with our ESL teachers in this area. Any questions from the board? The, the second area I want to report on is our high school graduation rate. Um, across the nation, school districts are now being asked to compute graduation rates in very specific ways. Years ago, school districts um, really used their own criteria for deciding what it meant for a child to graduate, whether a child graduated in four years or five years, whether or not um, they graduated with specific types of diplomas or alternative kinds of diplomas. So what has happened in the same way that there's been more of a, I guess, um, commonality across the nation with regard to Common Core assessments and park assessments, and so Common Core curriculum park assessments, there's now begun to be a more common way to assess uh, graduation rates so that states and school districts can be compared apples to apples instead of in their own, uh, their own ways. So I'm very pleased to tell you that um, uh, that for us, uh, this has meant uh, actually that our graduation rate is even higher than it's been over the last two years. Um, by way of example, um, for the graduating class of, um, um, of 2011, we had a 97.94 graduation rate for uh, the class of 2012. Uh, 96.95 and for the graduation class uh, of last year which again is that now common way it's looked at across the nation we're at 98.81 um, one of the highest um, rankings of uh, all the school districts that I could uh, could see across um, across Morris County and across most of the state so we did very very well and again 98 point uh, eight one percent graduation rate. Is there any one particular thing that contributed? I don't think so. I, I think because our graduation rates over the last three years are still pretty close, I think we were probably computing it in a very fair and honest way. And now uh, using that standard measure that everyone else is using. Um, so I think our, um, I see our high school principal, Doug Sanford, is out here. Um, I think that our high school administration and all of our teachers um, throughout the district deserve a lot of credit uh, that our students are um, um, meeting the criteria, graduating um, in a timely fashion. Thank you. Congratulations to the high school. Any questions? Okay, I've got uh, two other uh, announcements. Um, the first one is a very, very uh, positive announcement, uh, as is the second one. Um, so uh, we just recently found out that uh, OSR science teacher, uh, Kathy Ernst, has been named president of the New Jersey Science Teachers Association for the 2013-14 school year. She'll continue to work in the science field, sharing her dedication and passion for all aspects of the discipline. Um, so we're very pleased and proud of um, uh, Kathy for this wonderful accomplishment, being president of the uh, New Jersey Science Teachers Association. And um, the last announcement I'd like to make is this evening I'll be asking the board uh, to vote on the uh, appointment of uh, a district communications officer. This is a position that was recommended for us to uh, bring to the district uh, on behalf of our communications committee, what's the Board of Education Committee. Uh, Dr. Matt Payne chairs that committee. 
um, and uh, they asked uh, or authorized us to uh, look for a half-time position to fill this uh, important role in our district to be able to better communicate uh, with our community, our parents, our students, um, particularly around social media, moving us in that direction. And um, um, we did an uh, extensive interview process, and uh, we're very pleased to announce that uh, Susan Marinello uh, is our choice, and Susan is sitting out in our audience tonight. So um, uh, later on, I'll be asking you the board uh, based on a recommendation to approve that appointment. And the um, starting date for that position will be July 2nd, uh, 2014, uh, January 2nd, 2014. So now we're up to a presentation, and in a moment I'm going to introduce uh, David Tubbs, um, who is um, our supervisor of humanities. The Board of Education is aware that last year we uh, began a research project in the area of humanities after we had a successful first year in science research. I see again Doug Sanford, our principal, and Ken Nasdek, our assistant principal here at the high school, are here to uh, support David tonight. Um, and uh, David would like to, um, after observing the program for uh, almost a half year now, and Andrew and I have had a chance to observe the program as well, um, after uh, assessing the program, um, I know David is interested in expanding that program uh, next year, and the board might expect to see that in the uh, budget as we go forward. So tonight, David's going to do a presentation about the uh, research of the humanities program. I'll let you know all about it, how it's working, and in a few minutes, he's also going to ask for the board's indulgence to ask the board members and our uh, community members who are here to leave this room and to uh, go to the uh, uh, media center uh, where he has some uh, other, other parts of the program to show us. So, David, thank you for being here. You'll probably want to use the microphone so the uh, camera can hear you. Thank you. It's been an exciting year of putting together this uh, humanities research program, which works with both social studies and English. One of the things that we very much wanted to try to accomplish was to find a way to engage all students in an extraordinarily meaningful way to achieve not only understanding of the content, but the skills that they're going to need to succeed once they leave the high school. And so it kind of started from that point, um, and, and it built, and I can't emphasize enough how important it was that there was a team of people working closely together through the district to make this happen. So while I'm standing here alone right now with the introduction, it's important to realize that there were teachers, uh, other administrators, and you'll see them uh, once we go down to the classroom in the media center. Um, you know, the technology department, the teacher coach for technology, all of these people came together to really make this work. And I'm really proud to say that we've done more than we anticipated in the beginning. Students, by measure of the Danielson model, which we're using, have engagement that is off the charts. And students of, of all levels and previous academic achievement, it's absolutely amazing. So if you could just imagine for a moment a world where students can't wait to get to class, if you can imagine a world where students might be spending too much time by some measures at home working on things, but it's because they're so excited about it that they can't seem to stop. If you can imagine a world where students are coming out of their classes with great abilities to enter into discovery and research with skills in management, project management, leadership, and so on, even students who might have kind of tried to hide in the back of the class in the past. If you're imagining those things, for a moment you can stop because I'm going to bring you to a place where those things are real. And it's not a utopia, but it's close. It's close, and it's designed 
and being implemented for the first time right here at Marvel Township. So if you'll come with me to the Media Center, I'll show you how it works. Thanks for, uh, for coming on this little bit of a field trip. As I mentioned in the cafeteria, this is a project that has many people who had their hands in it and have helped shape it. Um, Mr. Kilinowski in the English department, Ms. Sam Filippo in social studies. We have uh, Mr. Thompson, who's our technology director, who's been instrumental in making all of the pieces click and fit together, um, as well as many others, uh, including our teacher coach, uh, Andrea Wallace. But we're going to share a little bit of this with you tonight, including with the students, because one of the things that it's very much focused on is being student-centered. So while we'll kind of open it up and show some perspective, we'll let them kind of take the rest of the show. And with that... All right. Thanks, Mr. Tubbs. Um, we thought since the school musical this uh, spring was going to be The Wizard of Oz that for those of us old enough to remember, we'd, we'd start a little in black and white. Um, for those of us who, who lived in Kansas for a long time. Um, in the past, and uh, the past is not too long ago, six months or so, uh, we had most of our students in a traditional setting. And we have these nice models, some of them you see here today. Uh, not staged at all, right? And this photograph's are all taken by Jacob over here. He's got artistic on us. But from this angle, you can see they all have the same textbook. Basically, one source, English classroom, uh, as well as in the history classroom. And uh, as you can see in this example in the past on uh, various English and history courses and uh, maybe even a lot of different academic courses, the material is uh, brought to the student in, in, a lot of, in a variety of different ways, but from the teacher, um, I guess you could say through lecture, PowerPoints, outlines, whatever the case may be, but you can see that the uh, students are sitting there um, basically just staring at the teacher and that is pretty much how, how things are supposed to get inside here. So. Um, all right, and so not that this ever happened in my class, at, you know, but um, sometimes when you present a, an activity to the whole group, uh, people get distracted or the previous, you know, evening takes over or uh, a social conversation. Um, every once in a while someone actually shows up with a pen, you can see that in the back. <laughs> um, and look, I, we got to make it a little bit light, so I'm not saying that uh, this was every day or as still as every day in anyone's classroom by any means. Um, but, you know, as we move forward you'll see the shift. Okay. Uh, in uh, this photo you see a student who is taking a traditional style assessment. Um, I think uh, all of us in this room uh, in the past and not too long for us, six months ago, were all taking traditional, tr traditional style assessments, uh, multiple choice tests, uh, matching with fill in the blank, with maybe uh, essay, short answer, those kinds of assessments, and uh, they were all assessed in the same way. So that would be the perspective. And in the end, you know, you, you had your paper passed back to you, and you saw that big grade, Nicole's never gotten a C minus in her life, that's <laughs> what it says there on the page. Um, but her grandmother, who was my history teacher, you know, at Lazar, gave me plenty of those. So, uh, uh, certainly, you know, there was less time for uh, student-teacher interaction. You, you handed those papers back, you moved on quickly to the next unit. Uh, and if a student had a question, it was come at lunch, come at school, try and find a time when the teacher wasn't in class to discuss what had gone on. So now we're moving uh, slowly out of Kansas. Um, and so we're going to turn this over um, to the students and let them go from there. And Christian was the one who set us up uh, with this. So uh, let's start. All right, so uh, in 2013, this is how the class has been run so far this year. We have laptops out on the tables, and it's a much more research-based class. And uh, I think it's just a greater better way to learn. 
Um, now we we use different resources rather than oh wait. <laughs> so the students are presented with a topic, time period, I, or an idea. I remember when we were talking about Beowulf, when we were first introduced to the novel, we first did some research on the Anglo-Saxons, and I thought that was a very interesting way to get into the topic, doing some background information uh, kind of on our own with our internet sources in front of us, uh, to kind of just get an introduction to the topic that we were learning about. And some of those internet resources that we use, um, we actually had an assignment where uh, we got a list of questions, and the way we answered them is we could only use YouTube videos. Um, and that was just a different way of doing research, rather than just Googling a bunch of questions and, you know, writing stuff down. Can I interject? Sure. Fossil, do you just want to tell them a little bit about some of the resources that um, we utilize in uh, US2 in terms of different sure. perspectives? So, like, usually, like, you, everyone's sort of PowerPoint and, like, Word, right? Here, what we're doing is we're actually using Prezi and, like, new technology, like, with uh, the books you, like that you can see, we're actually using those to our advantage in creating like more like techno like technological like advancement like uh, powerpoints and like as like that we're using Prezi to create uh, like a presentation for you guys today. All right, uh, we discuss and learn at different paces. All of us do. We all learn differently. So it, this has personally helped me a lot in class because sometimes I will fall behind, especially in the English curriculum. And uh, so, you know, it's good to just have a laptop in front of me. It makes me more comfortable with what I'm learning. And it's, it's great, because if you fall behind with the, the regular, how we've been being taught the past few years, you kind of have to get dragged along with the class. And when you're learning at a different pace with your own research materials, it does help out a lot and makes you a lot more comfortable. So, like, prior to this class, I was always, uh, like, memorizing, like, lots of facts. Here, I'm actually learning, like, what I need to know, and like like Miss Sanfilippo, she lays like a great foundation for us. So rather than having like 50 words you memorize for the test, she'd give you a topic, and you would research that top. You would out of like 50 topics, you pick one topic, and you get at least like about three weeks to just research and however like however way you would want to present it, which is great. So uh, in the class, uh, you're presented with a topic. Um, for example, my history class, uh, American imperialism, was the unit of our choice. And uh, in researching that unit, we had to come up with a topic. So for example, uh, the Russo-Japanese War was the one that I chose. And there were several different ways that you could present to the class uh, how you research that program uh, topic. So I chose to do it in a website. And you can actually look it up. And uh, rather than in a traditional class of me getting a book, popping it down in front of me, and memorizing facts about a war where I'll learn very minimal about, and probably won't remember at all, I. Uh, became a little mini master of it. So. Um, just like Noah said, I did my topic was the USS Maine, and I did a documentary, I made a video, and unlike other classes, I wouldn't be able to make a video like I did, because I was able to take all the information, some videos from YouTube, some information from websites, and all my primary and secondary sources into the presentation itself. Um, I just wanted to say that I prefer the Research for Humanity pilot program a lot more due to the fact that it's just so much more beneficial. The program's based on like individual paces and like needs. So me, um, last year, the old way my history class was run, it was like, you know, the basic textbook and everyone learns from the same source and the teacher goes at the same pace and if I had questions, I was like more shy, so I didn't really, you know, want to ask and interrupt the class with my questions. So I like that there's one-on-one -on -one with the teacher because um, it suits my like individual needs and I don't have to necessarily like waste time hearing other people ask questions I already know the answer to and other people don't have to like waste time hearing questions that I have that they already know the answer to and it's just um, a more well-run program because all of the students get a lot out of it because it's at their individual pace and needs. We wanted to offer um, at least half the time we have here tonight for any uh, questions or clarification from anybody in the room, either of the <coughs> students or Ms. St. Philip online. How many classes are there? Okay. Go ahead. In uh, the 11th grade social studies program, there are five that I currently teach, uh, four at the grade level. And uh, four at, or I'm sorry, one at, at one other level. So I have five total, and 
I have the same uh, for the 12th grade. And so when you're in a class, whichever, history or English, um, the class chooses a topic or you individually choose a topic? The, the teacher usually presents a broad idea or a broad uh, topic and then we kind of hone in on one specific aspect of it. And then when we present in front of the class, we're hearing everybody else's little bits and pieces of it. So it really helps to when you have a little small piece of it, it helps you to get a bigger picture of that small piece, and then when everyone shares it, it really helps get a larger picture of it all together. Where do you see this going next year? Well, That's about um, to we could go a lot of places. I think um, a couple of the things that will dictate that are you know, how we advance the tools. Um, we've got a wonderful card over there that's an advancement from this to store uh, our Chromebooks, which will help them last. But we want to move beyond Chromebooks. So podcasts to help uh, students who aren't the ones to hop up in front of the room, but maybe could record their own voice and hear their own voice for poetry readings um, in the English classroom, maybe Shakespeare stuff. Basic uh, presentation skills, uh, videotaping pieces, uh, for comparisons. One of the things we're talking about for Shakespeare this year is comparison um, performances for Macbeth to allow the students to understand how things are staged, costuming, uh, inflection of words. We're following the curriculum as it's written. If you blew that further open, we've got more options. One of the things, too, that we've been experimenting with a lot, and you can you can see it right here, and it's one of the reasons I wanted everybody to come here rather than another location. We've been experimenting with furniture and the environment itself and how it impacts the way in which students are able to learn. Um, so if you take a look at the desks, the traditional desks, which is what nearly all the classrooms have now, we've taken some of the furniture that wasn't being used for different, you know, from the media center and other places. And we've tried to rearrange it to try to change it into a more modern learning environment and see how that impacts it. And uh, one of the things that we've found is it, is it has a significant effect, we think, um, on students' ability to treat the room as more of a workshop rather than a factory production method. I have a question. The science research program is tracked so that the students will eventually select a topic and follow it through through a multi-year process, a three-year process, is that model also being considered or being worked on? In other words, is this the preliminary year that well, they're learning how to research in different ways of putting that together? Well, I mean, this is one of the science research program is something that we study early on because it was happening right here and it makes, you know, sense to, to look at that and it was part of the inspiration for this. But we're taking a different tact than just that. Um, I mean, it's a magnificent program, it's affiliated with the University of Albany and so on, but what we're trying to design here is something that um, is able to be done on a much wider scale. So, so I guess the short answer to your question is no, um, but we're trying to put something together where all students could learn this way and have the tools and, and opportunities to, to learn these skill sets and, and have this experience. Um, so do you mean that eventually you would like this, uh, is the vision to, for it to be a class where eventually every high school student would cycle through because of the skills it teaches? Well, I mean, I would very much, I mean, pending, you know, the type of success we're having continuing, yes. I mean, it's something we're, we're gauging very regularly to see how it's working. But yes, I think ultimately, you know, with that success, what I would like to see is in the humanities, which is really the only area I'm studying for it, um, that all students, particularly at the non-honors level, um, are able to engage in this sort of thing. Because one of the things that's really interesting is honors or not honors, we just had a report, you know, almost all of our students are, are graduating and they're going on, most of them to, to colleges, and they need to have these sorts of skills, abilities, and so on. And it's not only about understanding you know, about English 12, or, or all of the Englishes, or, or all of the histories for that matter. The contents are important, 
But it goes beyond that. How are you going to take that and apply it? They're learning to be project managers. They're learning to be leaders in a specific topic that they drill significantly down into. So you have a class of 25 students, all of whom, all of whom, get to be a leader in a meaningful and real way on something they're an expert in. Um, and those are just invaluable, I think. I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did. Side. <laughs> Carmela, just one other comment about that. I think that the difference between the science research program which I think is a different um, aspect of, of the curriculum, is that what they're doing really is still reflecting the Common Core standards. Um, it's not deviating from it, it's approaching it in a more authentic, student-centered kind of way. Um, and you've heard me and the board's heard me talk about this kind of education um, as, as I think being more meaningful, particularly as we are sending our kids out into the world at this, at this time. Um, the kinds of skills that they're learning and working on, I think, are those skills that they'll need for college and beyond. Thank you. So do you, do you feel that we're going to move past or forward from this humanities class and have this type of learning in our other classrooms? Well, you know, I, I think an interesting question for the students would be, um, I guess I'd almost ask them a dual question. Um, You've all been in, quote, I'll call them uh, more traditional environments, classroom environments, for, for much of your, your learning, and now you're experiencing this kind of environment in either, the, either English or, or your social studies. And I wonder which they prefer, learners, and which they feel they're getting more, um, more knowledge from, so to speak, more, more things that they'll be used. But before you answer that, I think that the science research program and what has happened so far in this research program are examples of where I hope our classes are, are headed. But maybe students would like to answer the question I asked, how do you feel about this kind of learning? And I prefer this type of learning purely because I think it's like more beneficial and I get more out of it because it is one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, you are at your own individual pace and also like last year in a more traditional environment, um, I wasn't interested in history, so like I didn't bother to like memorize this list of facts about like the United States presidents. But, like here, since it's individual and you make your own presentation on like what you're interested in and what you want to present to your other classmates, it's it's more fun. So I'm more interested in it, and I, like I found that it was easier to like learn things, and it, the facts stuck with me, so I got more knowledge out of this. Program. It, it feels a lot less forced. You are able to do everything, at, like Jen said, at your own pace instead of worrying about uh, pacing yourself for studying for a test. If you're studying for a test, you're worrying about it, you're stressing out about it compared to being in this kind of course when you can just do all the research and make a presentation to show your entire class so they get your perspective on the topic. Beyond the presentations, are there any other types of assessments in the class? Or? Uh, yes, we've had <coughs> quite a number of interesting ones. Some of the ones you saw there, the, the website from the English classroom, uh, we had a Beowulf art project. One of the young men whose uh, artwork is posted out here produced a, a clay frieze, did research on a, a specific scene from Beowulf, and then used his talents. Uh, but we have had apps produced in addition to actual programming language done, which took significant time. The students did a little write-up for it. Uh, we've had plenty of film reviews, you know, and there's still traditional writing that goes along with it, but um, I've not offered a standard multiple choice fill-in-the-blank objective test, but yes, plenty of other um, portfolio assessments, you know, giving students credit for uh, the daily work that happens and still keeping up with that requirement, still keeping up, I guess, that traditional phrase, course rigor, you know, still holding them accountable for what's going on. If I could just, um, just read it back a little bit on, on what uh, Mr. Kalinowski said. Um, it's really important for me through every unit that I go through, whatever end product the students are creating, that they have some kind of assessment, different types, especially in terms of writing. So you have a topic at hand, they're going to be researching and exploring that topic, 
consulting with a variety of primary sources and secondary sources in which they need to analyze and decide which is reputable, which is not. They bring all that information together. They decide what's important, which is reputable, which is not, and they incorporate that into either a presentation of their choice. It could be hand-created, it could be digital, as we've seen a lot of examples, and also the written part, which is very important for me. The students are constantly writing, they're constantly taking pieces from the sources, um, analyzing them, putting them into their own words, and deciding how they fit into the bigger picture. So um, from writing assessments to digital to everything, um, we're, um, at least I know I am, and from conversations Kurt and I have had, um, we're doing different types of those things so that we're um, seeing the skills that they are um, developing and utilizing. I can't tell you how many kids have told me just up until this point that um, you know they didn't know that there was anything beyond Wikipedia, which is really important as a history teacher or anything. I know we've all used Wikipedia every day. I do myself, but you know you don't know something, you type it in, and Wikipedia comes up first. And they're just realizing that there's this whole other world in terms of sources. And being a history teacher, like there's so many rich sources out there to make things come alive that we can access now that we're doing a program like this. That they're diving into things and discovering things that they never would have been able to do with those books that you see on that desk. So I think um, you know that kind of this kind of lends itself to just discovering and exposing and, and developing a lot of those skills. So. If I could make one last statement, I think from the teacher angle, this has been pretty, um, pretty much a leap. Yeah. I've had a very traditional education. I went to school here in Montville, and then to Villanova, Seton Hall. Um, so there's probably, you know, nothing liberal about my experience or, or <laughs> open about my experience in the classroom. You know, I I learned the canon, and and you know, I believe in it. So for me as a teacher. Um, this was a massive leap, but it's been a creative joy in many ways because I've gotten to work one-on-one -on -one with these students a lot sooner in the year than I would have in the past. So I'm, this will sound a little bit silly, but I picked up names in the room a lot faster this year. And uh, not because I handed out note cards and asked them a personal fact, but because I sat down and made a connection. And they got up right away and gave presentations. Um, not that everyone's comfortable doing that, but I saw students get up and do readings, ESL students, and they told me it was because they felt comfortable um, in this small atmosphere, and that translated into the larger classroom. So it will be a leap for us to move, I believe, beyond the two of us uh, into our respective departments, and not everyone, uh, I think, is going to be comfortable doing it. Giving up the curriculum and giving up the control of feeding the information was a big deal. Um, but I really think it's working. I, I think these folks are, are group. I certainly like it a lot more. I mean, coming into English class for the past three years, I haven't really enjoyed coming in and just reading out of a book and, you know, writing down notes from that. I like coming in and researching on a laptop. And, figuring out stuff for myself online. It helps a lot. makes me enjoy the class. Very yeah, good. I agree. Like, coming into English class is like actually like fun now. Like, I never thought I'd say it, but like I actually like look forward to like coming <laughs> into this room. <laughs> and when I go to like other classes, I notice like I really don't like sitting at a traditional desk and I really don't like to listen to a teacher stand up there for an hour and just lecture and like look at me and ask me like direct questions. And like Call me out in front of the class when, like, other like Mr. Kalinowski would like let everyone do their own thing and come around to you individually, and then he could call me out like by myself, <laughs> which I'm more comfortable with. <laughs> we like to call that check for understanding, right? <laughs> you can call it that. Check. You do your homework. <laughs> Thank, folks, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Aren't you happy that you're part of this school district? <laughs> it's you know probably self-serving to say that, but uh, we're doing some really exciting things here, and, and we really have Dr. Freed to thank. Uh, all, all we do is kind of stay in the background and let him and his great administration and the wonderful teachers uh, do what they do best, and that's educate our students. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Freed. Thank you to the high school to the other administrators involved, to the teachers, and to the students. Um, 
It's very exciting to be part of all of this. Well, you're kind to give me so much credit, but really it belongs to our high school administration, our teachers, um, who are taking these steps forward. And uh, as I think Kurt described, you know, he comes from a very traditional uh, background, and he has uh, talked to me about that. And uh, so he's taken a leap of faith, and he's been supported by our administration at the high school, and, um, and we're very pleased that it's moving so, so well.
discuss some feedback on the new elementary report cards, which were revised this year to reflect the Common Core standards and to add information per the standards. meeting last week and uh, Mrs. Witte made the committee aware of uh, the plans we have for seeking RFPs for the high school renovation on the fields and uh, naturally there are concerns about scheduling of athletic events and as in the past they we worked very well with Mrs. Witte and I'm sure we'll continue to do so. studies I just so we're clear there's some things that are talking about curriculum concerning both the music program and earth science now those are effective as soon as we approve the program of studies correct um, I would imagine so yes Earth science has been a requirement for students for a long time. I know Dr. Freed for the longest time has been saying that why do we have so many students doubling up on the sciences in ninth grade? And I think one of the reasons for it was the fact that a lot of students wanted to take biology in ninth grade, but since earth science was a requirement, they couldn't take biology in ninth grade plus it could be earth science. Um, the change where earth science is now no longer a requirement for biology, I think is a major step in the right direction. Um, it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for kids that if, if they want to take earth science, it's still there. And um, if they don't, they don't have to be saddled with it to take biology, especially in these days of forced financial literacy courses where that 
essentially kill an elective that a lot of kids have to take. Um, it gives opportunities. I think it's really a step in the right direction, and it's something that's been a very long time in coming, and I uh, applaud the administration. And um, so I'll just touch on it briefly. There's also been some changes in the music curriculum for next year, hopefully, that um, would entail going to single ensembles instead of breaking up the way we're doing it. It's a change that's long, long overdue. It was part of the last curricular report. And again, I applaud the administration. It's a step in the right direction. It's fixed a program that I really needed fixing. And it's a really great thing. I'm really happy about it. like that so um, I think you know it was very respectful I was very pleased about that that people really did not talk about personnel which and I asked people of course to not to and to contact me directly if they had particular concerns um, but I did think that the topics were all interesting I think they were all meaningful to the people who who mentioned them there were a couple of themes you know we took some good notes and certainly we're looking at those areas as I promised to do um, so yeah, I, I thought the meeting went well. I thought the audience was engaged and participating right through the, uh, the end of the meeting. So I was. Would you consider doing another one? Sure, like absolutely. I, I think once word gets around that it was yep. in actually interesting and, and productive. Yeah, as I said at the meeting, you know, we might in fact uh, find a particular topic or two that we want to focus on specifically. Um, and we would announce that in advance, things that we're looking at perhaps not even to implement for next year, but even the year before, the year after, and start that public conversation. But certainly having another open-ended one uh, would be something I could certainly do. You know, I think one of the exciting things beyond uh, what was discussed that night, um, it was just the opportunity for uh, the community to come to a forum 
and to speak what's on their mind and to, to say things that were of concern to them. And this is something that I think is another step forward in our ability as a school district to communicate um, with our parents and with the community. So uh, it's, it, was, it was very positive. Yeah, Karen, I think one of the other aspects is, is that as parents were talking, they sensed that the administration was listening and was going to act. And I think that's a real positive for the community to understand. Absolutely. Um, so, tonight is the last meeting on a jacket. And, um, No, I, I'm usually never at a loss for words. I'm usually very well prepared. And I am not. I, I could not wrap my head around the fact that this is Jackie in, in particular. She's, we've been board members together now for six and a half years. And I really could not wrap my head around the fact that she won't be here anymore. And as many times as I tried to sit down and write something eloquent, I couldn't. Um, maybe when we hand Jackie her plaque, I'll be, uh, you know, more uh, focused and concrete on what I can say. Uh, but tonight, it's it's been very difficult. I I did pen a couple of things, um, and for for you, Tom, uh, you've been here less a year you stepped up to the plate when, when you needed to fill John's big shoes um, and you've done so with such professionalism and experience and your knowledge base is phenomenal and in, in the in, for the few months you were here you've been a tremendous asset to the board and for me personally as my friend I will miss seeing you at our board meetings. But I know I, as my friend, I won't miss seeing you. Um, and then it comes to Jackie. And Jackie has served for six and a half years with great distinction. Um, Jackie, you've been an exemplary, an exemplary board member. You embraced the concept of being a good board member wholeheartedly. Um, you're always prepared. But the most endearing part is that you're so brutally honest. And you really keep us in check. You're the person who slaps us on the side of the head to keep us moving in the right direction, keeping us on track. And you're the only one that can get away doing that. And we love you for it. Um, you know, you're, you're, you have such great common sense, and um, you and I, you know, when you came onto the board, you know our past, and we weren't always on the same side of the fence. But out of, at, you know, good friendships are forged oftentimes out of adversity, and I would have to say that that's how ours was forged. And uh, I have such respect for you and admiration, and I love your family. Um, and I, I just, I just don't know how we're going to go on. I mean, we will because we have to. Um, I'm going to miss you terribly. And I'll just share with the public a, a, a very short, brief story, and then I know others have things that they want to say. But in years, in years past, and I'm going to talk about closed session, Steve, so I won't reveal anything, but um, in years past, um, sometimes the board would perseverate on discussion items, and we'd get caught up, and we'd discuss, and discuss, and discuss, and our wheels would spin, and we wouldn't get anywhere. And we would say, you know, stop tell each other, stop beating the dead horse. And we wouldn't do so much in public, although sometimes we did. But oftentimes in clothes, we would just say, stop beating the dead horse. Well, one of, it didn't take Jackie long. Maybe 
at our third or fourth closed session meeting, we got into one of those ruts. And all of a sudden, you do remember the Beanie Babies? Well, they made one look like a horse. And all of a sudden, flying across the table, she flings down this thing and says, stop beating a dead horse. And you know, it's, it's exactly what it took for us to say, like, what are we doing? She's right. I don't know. I'm going to stop talking, otherwise I'll start crying. So. I love you. I love you. Tom, um, you are the consummate professional, and it has um, been a learning uh, situation I, for, for me more than anything else being alongside you. Uh, you have so much knowledge about how this town runs, so much knowledge about how organization should run um, and I certainly feel that even at my stage of life um, you have taught me so much that I didn't know in a short period of time thanks so much for being here for this period of time um, Jackie uh, it's hard to believe that tonight has come um, I've been here five and a half years there are a few board members Mike Charlie and Karen that are uh, here before me uh, as a new board member, uh, I certainly look up to those around me who were here before me. They had experience and um, there's so much more knowledge than I had. And I sat back and watched, and, and over the years, Jackie, I've, I've sat and watched you, and over the last few weeks I've been trying to think and, and, and put my, uh, get my thoughts together in terms of what one attribute you have. Uh, that is just so unique and special and what I came up with is candor is that as Karen said you always unfiltered. <laughs> unfiltered and sometimes it gets you into trouble but we all love it and, but your family is not in agreement <laughs> <laughs> we know her well um, no matter whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation or the exact opposite, which is out in public and at a meeting that's well attended, uh, you always have been able to come up with what's in your heart, bring it forward, and tell it like it is. And that's an attribute that I personally wish that I could emulate and be like you. Um, over the years, being involved with CIT, which is, you know, my early years was uh, with you was something special because you were so motivated. Uh, in doing what was best for the school district with respect to that. And more recently on the negotiating team, which took about two years plus, you, Karen, and I, uh, that was a very special moment which uh, pulled us together because we had so much time that while we're waiting for decisions to be made from the other side where we could actually sit and talk and get to know each other. Uh, I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such a wonderful board member and the friendship that started here, I know it's going to continue eternally. I'm going to go in the same order. And Tom, our time together on the board has been short. But I think Matt took the words right out of my mouth, the consummate professional and so far that you stepped up when we had an opening to fill. You wanted to keep the board going in the direction it was going. You saw this as being something you could do to help the district, help the community as you've done your whole life. And um, the wisdom that you gave to us in the short time to run the board is invaluable. It was a, yeah, you saw things that we didn't see based upon your experience. And um, in just a short time, you think you've made an impact. And I want to thank you for stepping up, for professionalism, for bringing what you had to the table, and for um, wanting to be a part of us. It's been a privilege and an honor to serve with you. Jackie. I actually got to know Jackie really, almost really through my life from PTA. You know, on the board here, we all have different backgrounds, and I think that's what, one of the things that makes the board work. And with Jackie, we got the uh, the aspect of a person who is 
really before I was active on the board, really I've been very active in PTC, Lazar, I imagine probably Valley Dew, I can imagine. And uh, she brought that background to us. Now, her contributions on the board have been wonderful, but the thing that you guys probably don't know is how many times, which is more often than not, she'd bring the baked goods into the room back there. And it was a treat. You have to look forward to executive session. The brownies, the cookies, the whole thing. And you know what? It's not an unimportant thing because one of the reasons this board works is because we get along with each other. There's no five against four, six against threes. We don't always agree on everything, but we not only enjoy each other's company, we have respect for each other. And a lot of that I credit to Jackie. She brought warmth, she brought a lot of us together. Um, kind of like mom also the board, <laughs> she really was. And to a large extent, Jackie, I think for the last six years you've really been the heart of this board. And that's something we're all going to miss. Thank you so much for your contributions, and I'm really going to miss you. All the nice things have been said, now it's my turn. <laughs> for first of all, Tommy, I'd like to thank you for stepping up last year when we had a vacancy. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for the time that you served in your prior life when you were on the Board of Ed for three years and president for the, some of those years. Um, everyone, I think, in the room knows Tom Mazzucaro. I guess I've known him the longest because I guess we're two of the um, more mature people. Uh, Tommy and I probably go back 40, 45 years, and Tom has served on more commissions and committees for this town, and I don't think we should just say, thank him for serving on the Board of Ed. I think we should thank him for everything that he's done for this community. Tom, as you may or may not know, is retiring soon, and I think that his knowledge, his background, his support for Monfield Township, I hope it will continue because you are one unique individual and I really thank you for everything that you've done for the board and for the town. Thank you, Tom. Jackie, I've known Jackie for, I guess, eight or nine years now, not a long time. Um, and During the seven years she's been on the board, I think she's been on every committee there is. I think she's been liaison to more groups and PTAs and her dedication to the school board, you just can't say enough about it. Jackie and I served on a lot of committees together. Uh, sometimes Jackie and I did not always agree on certain things, but I know Jackie's thinking, and I hope mine, we had one reason for being here, and that's for the kids. We had no egos, nobody's running for office. We put the time in and we put a lot of time in because we're here concerned about the education for the children of Montville Township. I think the program we saw a short while ago is indicative of that and hopefully it will continue. I'm sure that everyone will agree that Jackie's number one advantage is knowing the town, knowing the people, and I think that we should thank her for the time that she's put on the board. And I think we should also thank her family. There's been many, many nights during the last seven years where she's not been at home. Thank her husband, Andy, and Andrew, and the two kids. And she's been a very dedicated individual. I would like to, again, thank her for the pleasure of working with you. I think it was a, something that um, I really enjoyed. You're a very valuable board member. I'm going to, believe it or not, miss you greatly. Feel free to bring make more baked goods in now. She was our in-house baker. You will be missed, but I think you can keep one thing in mind, that you always were here for the children. You always did what was best for the kids, and that's what I think our role is. And I thank you personally for that from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations. I think it's really ironic.
Tom and Jackie have both been mentors to me in very different ways. When I first moved to Montville, Tom was actually one of the first people I met, pretty early in. And I liked him instantly for his quiet manner and for his absolutely extraordinary dedication to Montville. Tom was one of the people who very early on encouraged me to become active in the community and supported my first run for the board. And it's a debt to Tom that I can absolutely never repay other than to offer friendship and, and really extraordinary gratitude for his service, not, to, not just to the community, but at, really and truly as his role in, um, in my life as a mentor and someone that I always looked up to. When I came on board three years ago, Jackie agreed to be my mentor, uh, which I thought was nice. She's nice. She seemed nice enough even though I had just run against her. <laughs> um, no, I didn't need you. Um, and as I've come to know Jackie, I've come to adore Jackie for her dedication. Her knowledge of the school district and her knowledge of curriculum is extraordinary to the point where when she came down, at, when she stopped serving as the chair of the curriculum committee this year and I took over, um, it was one of the few circumstances that put me into a cold sweat because there are such enormous shoes to fill. Those are committees and committee meetings that the public does not attend. Um, but the amount of work that Jackie puts into those, into attending all of her meetings, but the extraordinary amount of preparation that Jackie does for each and every meeting that she attends. In fact, I think sometimes she forgets that she's no longer the chair, but that's fine with me. <laughs> but that's absolutely fine with me, and I've made a promise to give me her notes this year. So to Jackie, I also owe a debt of gratitude. I think that the community owes a debt of gratitude. and. The wonderful thing about Jackie, in addition to her candor, is I always knew absolutely, no matter what her opinion on any topic was, whether I agreed with her or not, and the disagreements were probably very few and far between, <coughs> the lodestar for Jackie is what's in the best interest of the children, first, foremost, and always, and that's extraordinary. Jackie comes to this job without a political agenda and purely to do what's in the best interest of the children. Thank you. Uh, I've known both of you guys now, probably about the same amount of time. Tom, like Carmela said, helped us with our election initially, and Jackie we actually ran against. Uh, but what I do have to say is that I respect both of you immensely. Uh, you both gave so much to this town, gave so much to the education system here, and I just want to say thank you to both of you guys. Tom or Jackie? Yeah, I'll start. I'm a here. I do know that I only came on board less than a year ago, and I uh, and I had I had no doubts that I wanted to serve for that year. Uh, I, I guess the best thing I can say here is that I have been enlightened tremendously by this board itself, but also by the administration. I think this uh, community is going to be served very well, and it has been served very well, uh, with a, such a professional board, and especially its leadership, Karen, uh, that I think without it, I think it would be floundering a little bit too, like most committees do without good leadership. However, uh, looking at the administration with uh, Dr. Freed uh, and Casey and Andrea and Jim and, his, and their staffs, the respective staffs, I have never worked with a more professional group, with a more intelligent group, uh, and I am very proud to have served. Uh, this one year, I did serve three years in the past. It was a lot simpler, by the way. I think you guys are just saddled, saddled with so much in the way of regulation and, 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 and uh, infusion from the state, from the federal government, et cetera, the 600,000 you mentioned tonight is probably just the tip of it. But I am I'm very proud to have served. It's only one year, but I am very proud to have served with Jackie here as well. And I'll see you guys again, I guess, occasionally. And I hope to see Jackie again. 
I know sometimes we used to have a little fun with each other, but uh, I do love her. I really do. So, good luck. very hard for me. It, it, it's been a privilege and a pleasure serving the public on this board. I, I can't imagine a more wonderful, amazing experience. And I have to tell you, I have to, Charlie, you were right, I, I have to thank my family because without their support, um, I, I was away many nights, away from home and family and dinner, and I wasn't cooking. And they, they put up with it, and, and they supported me. And it, it's allowed me to give back to my community, which is something that my husband taught me was uh, very important to do. And it's allowed me to grow as a person. And I feel that I have grown so much in these last seven years working with all of you. And I thank you for that. I, and I thank my family. And uh, we have done, as a team, such wonderful, wonderful work here. And I know you're just going to continue doing that great work. I have absolute faith that you're just going to continue. And we're going to do great things for the kids tomorrow. So thank you all. Charlie, thank you for not really singing me. I appreciate it. <laughs> and, uh, I love you. I'm going to miss you. I really will. On behalf of the administration, uh, we thank you both, uh, Tom and Jackie, uh, all of us do. Um, for us to do our work well, it really requires um, a Board of Education that can listen carefully, understand the direction that we hope to move forward in as educators, as a community, and hopefully gain your trust and support. And, um, um, you know, I thank all nine of our Board of Education members for that trust and support, and tonight particularly the two of you. Um, Tom, in the short time that I've gotten to work with you, I've appreciated your wisdom, your knowledge of the community, and the, um, and the advice that you've given. Um, I think it's been very, very helpful and important. And uh, Jackie, you were a member of the board that um, hired me. Um, and uh, that's been very meaningful to me uh, in particular. Um, and I thank you, Jackie, for your trust uh, over my almost uh, four years here now. So thank you. It's been my pleasure. Um, I love oh. Our pleasure. I love you. Okay. Um, I'll open it up to the public now for any comments that are not on the agenda.